Hey, what's up, y'all? Well, we're gonna talk about some sight fishing strategies. Uh, my favorite way to catch redfish in shallow water. Uh, the lures that I like to use that I think work the best usually uh, are gonna be your soft plastics. Uh, in this video, I caught a couple good slot reds a day or two ago, and um, I was throwing a, a five inch saltwater assassin on a weedless hook because I was fishing a lot of grass you'll be able to see in the clips and the hook that I use on the bigger the 5 inch soft plastics is a 5 aught and it's a 3 16th ounce so just a little heavier than a than a 1 8 ounce and um, it, it's a good it's a good pair on for the weedless for, for these uh, for the lure because you have a little bit of gap you need some gap you need some space in between that lure and that hook so when they bite down on it you got plenty of hook to to set you know uh, if you use a little bit smaller hook like a four aught yeah it may hook up you know uh, but i've had some miss some quite a few missed uh hookups because of because the hook was a little too small when using the weedless hooks Goodness, dude. What the hell? What's going on here with my weedless hook? Uh, the other lures I like to use are the little four inch paddle tails. And this is also a saltwater assassin. Um, it's just what I have been throwing lately. I do, I do catch them on all kinds of brands and colors. So um, the most important thing is just getting it in front of their face. And uh, if you can get it right in front of them, it's it's uh, it's going to be a good chance to hook up. The uh, the little four inch, I use a four aught in a one eighth ounce weight. Uh, you can use just a little bit heavier if you want. Um, usually, I can't find these uh, in anything different, so uh, I've been using those. Uh, I kind of throw those more on the spinning cast reels because they're a little bit lighter and a little bit harder to throw. Uh, I, I do throw them sometimes with the bait caster, but like I said, the spinning cast is a little bit easier to throw the real light, the real light little lures. And, uh, and when they're being picky sometimes, sometimes the light lures uh, will pay off, you know. So, uh, But I did catch them on the bigger lure a day or two ago. I don't think it was this exact color, but it's, it was the exact same lure and real close to this color. The uh, chartreuse tails is what I love about uh, all the lures I use when I'm fishing uh, in a little bit dirty water. I think the chartreuse tails stand out. I also use a Procure scent, and I put that scent on as often as I can think about it. Uh, I look at the lure after five to ten cast and if i don't see that brown residue on the lure this stuff will put a, a little bit of a brown residue you just smear it on there and when i'm not seeing that residue no more i put i put a little bit more on there you just put a couple drops and just kind of smear it on the body but some of the lures like this bigger saltwater assassin has this belly which i love for scent you can squeeze some scent down in there and it seems to last longer uh, on the uh, the ones with the little cut on the belly. So so those are the lures that I like to use. Uh, I do sight fish uh, in other areas with things like wake baits and topwaters, but this area that, that, I, that we fished was, was real grassy and this was the only way uh, we, were, we were gonna be able to get a lure in there. So let me just, just let it run, I guess. Let it run, baby run. I don't have a spot for that one. We're running out of spots, man, for the lures. <laughs> oh, also the Procure, which scent do you use? Uh, they have different scents, uh, different flavors. <laughs> um, they have shrimp, they have inshore slam, mullet, ladyfish, menhaden. The menhaden was my favorite. I was doing real good on the menhaden for a few weeks. I went to go buy it and uh, I went to the tackle store a few times looking for it and I didn't ever find it. Uh, I caught them on this video with the mullet flavor, so uh, I, or mullet scent. Um, 
I think they all will help some kind of way, you know, so, but the Menhaden has, has been my favorite. And if you're not fishing uh, a real grassy area, if it's just mud or a, a grass shoreline that doesn't have a lot of the submerged grass, the jig heads and a quarter ounce uh, are going to be what I would prefer to use. I would prefer to use these than the weedless. Um, the weedless hook up pretty good if you got the right size hook. Um, but if you don't, you accidentally have the wrong size hook, uh, there, there's no going wrong with the jig heads because when you pull that jig head through the top of the soft plastic, there's going to be quite a bit of that hook sticking out and it'll, it'll hook them. You know, as long as they do a for real strike, they do sometimes just bump it and you go to set and... <laughs> Bitch. He freaking hit it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he hit it. <laughs> and the fish in there, it's because they're not really trying to eat it. They're just kind of going up and pecking it. And they, they do that mostly to try to tell that, that mullet, you know, get out, get out of here. You know, this, this is my area and I'm not interested in eating you at this time. Also to make them completely weedless, which I forgot to tell y'all. So the hook is, is sticking out right there. You can pull that plastic back just a little bit and put that hook just in the top of that plastic. And when they bite it, that hook will come out, you know, real easily and it'll be pretty dang weedless like that. So uh, that's also how I fish them. So on this sight casting uh, redfish that I caught, I seen him make a bust and I went and I casted pretty close to that bust and I actually didn't make a good cast, but a lot of times they run out. They'll, they'll make a bust and then they take off another direction. So you have to kind of look at the wake that they make and try to follow that, that wake. So I know it's hard to see, but that redfish is right here. You can see a little bit of a, of a bowl right there. And I actually cast it too far to the left. Okay. Wasn't that bad, I guess. And like I said, uh, he was like right here, but after he busted, he went that, that way and I just didn't see him. I just didn't see his wake. He was too far away. And uh, I got lucky on that one, but I was at least casting in the general area where I seen his his head sticking up. And uh, I, I bet I was following these fi these fish right in this little same spot for uh, for quite a while, and I was keeping an eye on where they were. And whenever I seen something bust, I would throw in there. And I'm trying to keep that fish on top of that grass with my rod tip real high, which is kind of dangerous because if the hook comes undone, it'll come right for you. But <laughs> I was keeping that rod pretty high and horsing the heck out of him. That's why I like using 40 pound braid. So that color of the lure looks to me like one of the Texas roach colors. They have a little bit of black on the top. So it was a real nice red, probably about 23 inches. And here I am poking it. I'm going to poke it back in there to make it weedless. Look at that big dude right there. So I know y'all can't see it, but that red was about right here. And I could actually see his back and his tail out of the water. And I cast it right here, which, which was just a little too far away from him. He never seen it. So I make a few bumps thinking maybe he's heading that direction. And since I'm sight fishing, I go ahead and reel it back in. I'm not going to waste the rest of the cast because I'm looking at this one red. I'm targeting this one red. And he's a pretty good one too. 
So it takes me a few casts. I'm still casting a little bit too far to the right. That fish is still somewhere right in there. And I cast it a little too far to the right still. Sometimes it takes a few casts, but it's very rewarding when they, when you see them hit it. So I bump it, you know. Come on, dude, it's a free, easy mullet. I bump it maybe 10 times. I go ahead and reel it in. And I make another cast to, to where I see him. Bumping it, he's going to the right. Uh, also, <laughs> keep in mind what's going on right here, which I didn't see till a while ago. We got some red, some reds right there next to me. Oh, good cat! And you can you can start to see his back come out of the water right there. That would have been a pretty cool hookup, real close to me. But I'm focusing on that one red over here. Uh, my rule has always been. Focus on one at a time. Sometimes there's so many and it's easy to get distracted. I like to to target the ones that I am seeing their back or their tail uh, for a while. They'll be swimming on top of that grass just real slow. And I love hooking up on those reds. Yeah. So I finally got it right in front of me. looking for. <laughs> If you let them get down in the grass, they will tangle up and get stuck. <laughs> You'll have to pull yourself over there and get them out of that grass. A little bit bigger than usual. You see how bad the grass is that I'm fishing? That's why we're going weedless. <laughs> fat dude. They are getting fat for winter time. Yeah, all right. Came out pretty easily though. Real nice red. <laughs> so we'll do a few um, a few practice runs on just some some water here with the grass, and uh, like I had said, that red was was about right there. And my goal is to cast just past him and bring that lure in real slow to him and then make and then bump it. I usually bump that rod uh, with the rod tip straight up. I'll give it two bumps and then I'll reel in the slack. And as I'm reeling in the slack, that lure is, is sinking a little bit. It's real, real shallow, but it is still going, going down close to where his mouth and his eyes are going to be to where he can see it. There are days when when I see the red or I see a blow up and I cast right, right on top of him and there are times when they will eat it immediately and that definitely works sometimes when they're real aggressive, real hungry, but I always try to cast it past them and bring it into them. So sometimes I'll see a wake. I don't really see the fish. I don't see the redfish, but those wakes make kind of like a V. So this one in this scenario would be swimming to the right and uh, depending on how fast he's swimming will depend on where I cast it to, but uh, usually the wakes, uh, they are swimming pretty fast. They're, they're moving, otherwise they won't really put out a wake unless they're moving pretty quick. So I'll cast it over in here, expecting him to be still cruising this way. I may wait just for a second, and when I think he's getting to where I can cut him off, then I'll, I'll bring that lure in and, uh, and give it a couple bumps. So same thing, if that wake is going this way, then that fish is swimming to the left. I'll cast somewhere in here, and uh, sometimes I cast too far, and I'll reel it in real quick to where I think it's gonna cut him off. It's kinda like, uh, it's kinda like duck hunting or dove hunting. You have to kinda lead him a little bit and just kinda judge where you think he's going. A lot of times you see their tails and casting to their tails is the same same thing, same uh, same way of sight casting. Uh, I know a lot of people sight cast. They actually are looking down in the water real close to them. The reds uh, definitely let you get close to them if you're being quiet. 
Uh, but all the sight fishing I do is uh, from sight fishing wakes and blow ups and um, and tails. So that's that's the way I fish. Because most of the time the water is too dirty to really see down in it in a lot of the areas I fish. I do fish clear water stuff too. And I'm so used to looking at wakes and blow ups and, and tails and backs out of the water that I fish the same way. I, I hardly never look down in the water because it's just easier for me to, to see them a little further away uh, by the commotion that they're making on the water. So here are some clips of uh, some commotions that they make that, that you should look for. Golly. Golly. Moving away. There, look at that big son of a gun. They're gone. <laughs> His head was out of the water. Well, there went that one. God, look at me. Golly. That was a big one. Look at that guy right there. <laughs> That's a big red, see? The commotions are a lot bigger than mullet and big bait. There are definitely some big mullet that that will trick you. They still trick me. If you're unsure, it doesn't hurt to cast in there. The redfish just make a bigger splash, a bigger, it's just a harder, <laughs> a harder commotion on the water than the mullet do. Eventually you'll get to where uh you know, you hear those mullet jumping behind you and all around you, and I used to always look, you know, and now I, I know the sound of the splash, and I don't even look back, you know, I know that it's, that it's not a redfish, so time on the water will, will help you to distinguish things like that. Also, when the reds make a bust, you hear this, this big gadoosh, but you hear a pop, a suction noise. Those reds, when they're sucking that bait in, they make a, a sound, a distinct sound to me. And it's usually that pop, that suction noise, followed by a blow up. I hope some of these tips were helpful for sight fishing redfish. Oh, there's one. Look at that big weight right in front of me. Oh, oh boy. Oh, it's a good one. Oh, it's a good one. Okay, he was on. <laughs> I didn't know. I... <laughs> Maybe... Maybe they want the scent. No, it was a freaking red. <laughs> 